I'm Ken. I build cigar box guitars. Uh, this one here is my latest one. I've built about 20. This one's going out to New York City as soon as this video is over. Why do I like this kind of twangy junk style music? Well, it might go back to my parents owning a bar in Wisconsin when I was uh, two and three years old. It might be that uh, I heard Speedy West on a steel guitar. It might be that I used to work the oil fields in the Panhandle of Texas and the only stations that would come in were the twangy old uh, country. Um, anyway, this music just uh, resonates in my bones and I really like it. Somebody suggested that because I'm kind of picky and uh, unique about how I build these things down to the kind of box I use and pickups and, and different components that I make a video of showing how to build one step by step and I've done that so let's watch that it's kind of long but you can pick through it and see what you like and what you don't and then at the end we'll hear how this thing sounds before I wrap it up and ship it out to New York City all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to my collection of Camacho boxes I like Camacho boxes and we're going to pick this one out. I've already talked to the person I'm making this guitar for. And we've determined that this is the box uh, and the color of box that they like. I've taken the top of the box off here so we can see these are thick boxes. They're not uh, like a paper thin box like uh, one of these old ones like this. Or even uh, one of these more modern boxes. A lot of people like this because they give you a, uh, a sound that's different, an acoustic sound. But uh, I like these Camacho boxes because they're thick, they'll hold up, and if you're actually making for uh, one for somebody that plays uh, commercially or is in a band, I guess is how you would put that, um, these things are hold up. They hold up well, they're kind of bulletproof. Now I've taken the lid off the box by uh, unloosening these screws up here. And now I'm going to um, cut this off or, or, or get this part of the sticker off. Of course, we're going to leave little remnants of it here and there so you can see that it was a cigar box. But the first thing I've got to do is get rid of this scorpion. That's kind of creepy. I, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to need this to be uh, sanded off so I can work it and lay some things out. So... Let's uh, do that. So this little palm vibratory sander is my weapon of choice here to get this lacquer coating off the top of the box. Okay, that looks pretty good there. It's roughed up. I can do my layout here now. Also, I'm going to want to turn this over because on the bottom side of the lid, there's going to be this area right in here where I'm going to be gluing the neck to it and doing some stuff. And you want to remember that any lacquer or painted surface is not a good gluing surface. So I'm going to run a skunk stripe down here with the sander and let's do that now. Okay, there's that skunk stripe on the back. It doesn't have to be pretty. Nobody's going to see the inside of the box. Um, and, and this here is just as well. So the top of the box is sanded off and prepped for the next step. Okay, so I've got... Uh, my metric ruler on top of the box it's showing it's 174 millimeters which is 87 how you like my calculator um, these new phones are awesome for some things uh, and so I'm gonna mark uh, at 87 millimeters on both uh, ends of the box so now I've marked at 87 and 87 here again it uh, depends on the width of your box top and I'm going to run a line down here and that's going to identify the center of the box for me and that's going to be really important to stay square on a number of things that's going to go on at the top of this box. The last big thing I'm going to do to prep the box is there's this fuzzy stuff on the bottom of the box that's going to come off it's going to be covered now I've learned that uh, some of this stuff comes off real quickly and other times it'll just be something that takes you a long time to do but once this is done I want to keep the sides of the box nice because that's going to matter you're going to be able to see that um, through the life of the guitar so we're going to 
protect this and be careful, but this has got to come off. So again, this is just uh, taking a scrape or getting under the corner and peeling it back. I'll get that off and we'll have another look. All right, we took the sander, we roughed up the bottom of the box. There it is, that's all done. Okay, so I've got the top of the box uh, sanded off and I've got things marked out and laid out. There's gonna be a number of things that go on here. There's gonna be sound holes up here, one on each side. Um, there's going to be a single coil pickup that will go right here. you got to kind of pay attention to where the logo or the graphic is on your box lid and how you want things to be laid out. I'm going to use a floating bridge like you see on an old uh, silver tone or a K. That's going to drop right into here. And, um, and then most importantly, the neck on this guitar is going to... Uh, be set into the top of the box here so I'm, that's going to actually end up there and, and one of the things that's really important is you'll see it says bridge right here and that bridge has to line up with this part of the box here because it, it, if you don't line all this up uh, your it won't play right so you can see I've drilled a number of holes here that I can get a jigsaw a blade into and then cut these out on the lines cleanly. You'll notice that I use tape. I tape off everything so I don't uh, bug out the, the back end too much. Uh, of course this is going to be hid underneath inside the box but nonetheless I don't like to chip everything and, and all that so uh, time to get cutting. Now, if you're going to make very many of these cigar box guitars it might pay to get you a set of these Forstner bits if you go to uh, Harbor Freight or somewhere like that you can get a a set that's uh, pretty reasonable but they'll come in handy for drilling holes for uh, jacks and and uh, your volume controls and your sound holes and all that so I'd recommend you do that if you're going to build very many of these so I pre-drilled a little hole right there uh, so I can put my Forstner bit right there so I'm going to take a drill attachment that I have and just work these nice and round until uh, this drain fits in all right there we go you can see uh, these drains fit right in they're pretty snug uh, you don't want to have to beat them in if you beat them in then uh, if you crack this in here that's not a problem but they need to be snug enough for this lip, lip right here rides this they're ultimately going to hold down um, some bolts that keep the box together but anyway that's what you're looking for right there Next part's pretty easy. I take a jigsaw like this and I go and uh, cut these areas that I have marked out. I cut those out and I use these pre-drilled holes as a means of getting into corners and, and making this easy. You don't want to be taking your jigsaw and banding it trying to go around curves because again if you crack this right here or here or here uh, or down in here you're going to end up starting over and you don't want that. We already got uh, probably an hour into this lid already okay cut one turned out nice because this is going to sit around the neck like this this neck is actually going to stick up above this box which means I'm going to have to route this out here and then there's going to be some additional routing that uh, takes place for the pickup which is deeper uh, than this and as well as the bridge it sticks up so you're going to you're going to want to Pay attention to your measurements here because at the end of the day your strings really can't be any more than a quarter a width between the 12th fret or it, it, it won't keep its intonation and now the pickup this is the pickup cover it goes uh, on uh, this side of the box this here uh, goes underneath the box on it or flipped over but uh, there's holes here and so I have to draw holes in the box right here so I can adjust for the pickup up and down so I'm going to do that now now whenever I'm going to drill holes like that I'm always going to use a small bit to drill a pilot hole before I drill the bigger bit that will ultimately have to hold uh, the screw in the spacer okay so that's what it looks like now I you see that that hole there that hole lines up with this those are adjustment holes for uh, these screws that will uh, adjust how high the pickup is uh, or how close it is to this to the strings and then 
I'll end up drilling holes here for the mounting hardware, but that's how the uh, the uh, single coil is mounted, just like that. Yeah, so this is how it's starting to come together so far. We've still got some uh, bridge work to do, and then of course uh, the volume controls, and there will be some other stuff on here we'll get to. But yeah, this is how it's coming along. Okay, so we're getting the box lid ready for some graphics. So all the holes got to be drilled. Now you'll notice I drilled two holes right here. Um, these are going to be for these uh, potentiometers that are volume controls. Uh, there's two of them. Uh, one for a piezo, which is a buzzer. It picks up vibrations. It gives you that 1930s sing in a can, twangy. Uh, rattle the top of the box beat on the box sound and then there's the, the coil of course which is uh, the more modern electrical guitar sound now the bridge is going to sit right here so you got to make sure that uh, these are placed so there's an edge of the box that we don't want to interfere with this has got to go underneath here and so again there's going to be two uh, volume controls for two different pickups on this guitar uh, one last thing I almost forgot is I'm going to put box corners on the on the box. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a, a small bit and I'm going to pre-drill uh, each one of these little holes. So with all the, the holes cut now, we're, um, we're ready to put the graphic on top of the box and then do all the cutouts here and hide all this mess. All right, we got the graphic on the top of the box. Um, Everything's cut out for all the components, and we got some more work to do, but that's kind of gives you an idea what it's going to look like. We're going to matchbook the neck. One of the first things we're going to want to do is we're going to find out where the center of the box is and, and also the lid, because a lot of things are going to uh, be marked off of that, where the neck goes. Uh, how deep this cut is made here to seat the neck where things line up on the top of the box so we're going to mark that off next a little commentary here you know it was funny when i was uh in elementary school a long time ago they told me oh we're going to have to learn the metric system because it's going to be the way of the future now i've spent about well 50 some years waiting for that to happen and the only time i really figured out that the metric system was going to help me out was when I started making cigar box guitars, believe that or not. Okay, now we're going to go to work on the box. A couple of things I want to do is pre-drill the holes for the metal corners. I'm going to do that, um, and I'm going to do all four corners there. Now, the next thing I want to do is, and I catch a lot of flack uh, uh, about this from people who are purists or whatever, but I take caulking, and I put it a bead of caulk everywhere inside the box like this because it seals up the box and in the event that somebody were to uh, drop the guitar or something like that it kind of solidifies it now I've got this tool here so I just run it down the corner and do that and run this all the way down like that and then I'm going to do all the sides of the box and let that harden up before I uh, do anything else Okay, there we go. Um, I've got the inside of the box all caulked up here. Again, I'm using uh, a kitchen and bath adhesive caulk. It dries clear. I use this thing to uh, make things smooth. It clear, dries clear. You never see it. It solidifies the box. In the event that somebody drops it, it hits a corner, it holds things together. Because if you're making these things for people to play, um, and they drop it once and it fails them on stage they lose confidence in your instrument and 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 then it becomes a wall hanger so if you're into making wall hangers good if not um, I would suggest you caulk the box besides that a coil and a piezo they really don't have uh, much to do with they're not hampered much by caulking all right on the bottom half of the box you're gonna make a cut like this to seat the neck on both sides of the box that's made with uh, the fine tooth saw. Uh, the horizontal cut is made with this puppy. And then you just sand it and, and uh, do whatever you need to do to make it fit. You want to remember that this has to be wide enough 
for the neck and the lid to open this way when the box is done. If you don't build them this way, then you're building a guitar that you have to take the strings off of unbolt half the world to, to, to do anything to the electronics. So this is the reason I do it like this. Okay, now on the bottom of the box, I've drilled a hole for this bolt. The bolt will fit down in there snugly. And what happens is it comes up through the box and then comes through there. And we put this wing nut right there through there. And that's really what holds the box closed. So that's the secret. Okay, I've drilled two holes in the back of the box at the tailpiece end uh, for two uh, jacks like so and remember this is going to have two pickups one's going to go to a piezo one's going to go to a single coil and let's not forget our pin for our strap our guitar strap we'll have one of those at the front and one at the rear of the box and then there's that little last hole right there in the front of the guitar and that's for a greaser why greaser yeah, just in case your plan gets a little rusty. Now I want to talk a little bit about next. Um, I, I don't want to get into it too deep because it's a it's a whole topic in, in itself and, and how to do it. But you can buy a, a pre-made neck. You can buy a neck or a guitar at a, a thrift store and take the neck off of it and fix it to your cigar box or you could you could just get a piece of a wood here and and figure out uh, where the frets are going to go you can actually buy uh, fret boards that are pre-made that uh, you either can cut the uh, fret slot in them yourself but in, in, in either one of these situations you buy fret wire here and uh, you basically cut the frets you uh, hammer them in to these little slots here and then you have to level them and all kinds of things so there's a lot of work to this and you know the edges you when you're playing the guitar you don't want to be snagging or having whoever's playing to snag themselves in but there's a lot of work here so um, this is a whole video in itself um, anyway um, those are a couple of options Now, what I've done here is I've basically routed out where the box top will go. Um, here, uh, there's going to have to be room for the single coil. Uh, the bridge is its own thing. Okay, so I'm putting on uh, this loud red paint. That's part of uh, what we all decided upon. Now, when you're painting, put the paint on in, in thin layers and numerous layers. And also, it's very important that you have, like, mustard weed dried mustard weed all over the place around you because it controls the humidity or or something else i would tell my wife about why i'm building guitars instead of uh clearing off mustard weeds off the property <laughs> don't tell her i hope she doesn't see this don't share it with her okay promise okay now we're going to start working on putting in the tuners we're going to put a tad bit of glue in here you don't want your tuners working loose after a couple of years. So you put a little bit of glue on there. You put this keeper on. This goes on the top like so. And then we'll take a rubber mallet. And we'll drive that in and we'll do the rest of them the same way. There we go. All the retainers are in there on the top. And we'll uh, flip it over and put the tuners in from the other side. Now we're going to put the tuners in. Remember, we pre-drilled the holes and then it's just a little screwdriver work and put the tuners in. This part's really easy. It's just a matter of putting screws in to the tuners and uh, tightening them down. And uh, easy stuff now. And there's the top of the headstock. We've got the graphic on and you can see the tuners are in with the trim. Okay, we're going to start matchbooking the neck now. This is what it looks like before. Alright, the matchbooks are on the neck. Now 
All right, now I'm going to spend a little time showing you uh, the tail piece where the strings and everything come together. So I like this uh, little ruler. It serves as a depth gauge, handy to have in a, uh, around several of them. Uh, thank you, Acton Ace Hardware, for getting these in. I misplaced mine and I was lost without it. So I'm simply going to use this, the guitar I built in the past. You uh, will see how long the tail piece is from the cut of the box. And then you come in here, uh, you simply... I'll mark that off with your trusty T-square, that's something you'll need. Um, anyway, then what happens is you really have to pay attention that your strings are grounded, especially if you're using a wood bridge like this one. And so, to accomplish that, what I do is I use these tension pins. Um, you'll notice there's a slot back here. When you're putting your tension pins in these holes that you drill, you want to make sure that the slots are facing the back of the guitar because if they're around this way then the strings drop in that slot and get cut or whatever but anyway when you're driving those in they need to be snug to the wood so you pick your drill bit anyway once the tension pins, pins are in I use uh, this is the trick to grounding uh, it's 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 copper a stick on foil um, it will ground anything there's a layer of that underneath here going back into the electronics and then what I do is I uh, cover that with an old canning lid. You know what these are. If you don't, you miss part of life. Anyway, you just basically take your shears, cut those, uh, match it to this side. And then uh, once that's lined up, you drill four little holes. You put your screws in, very small screws. These are, uh, I use a ton of these in these, uh, building these things. And then anyway, once this is covered up, you find where the mark is. You can either do that from underneath when you're doing this side. Uh, drive it in, drill it, and then uh, use a number of punch or an awl or something to uh, get those holes in and flip it over and do it on the other side. But it's really important that this part has metal that has a way through this to be grounded to the inside electronics. Okay, I'm just going to take this awl and mark off my uh, holes for these tension pans get a good straight start and then I'm just gonna now what I want to show you here is these strings actually go through these pins and make the metal to metal contact but then at the end this uh, gadget this little ring at the end of the string is what keeps it uh, in the guitar or keeps it from slipping so what you don't want is you don't want that piece down here snagging on everything so uh, I know the, the length of the pin uh, or the tension pin and so I'm going to make a little notch here. First I'm going to cut this uh, with a fine tooth saw uh, like, like this right here uh, and then I'm going to take a router and route this out so this will be protected, this uh, end piece of the string will be protected and won't snag on anything. Right there we go that's what the inset looks like the pins are the are that long they go in here they'll be here and the string keepers will hold right here out of the way of everything okay I want to give you a close-up of this remember these uh, tension pins with the slot to the back of the guitar are going to slip into here like so but before I do that I'm going to want to put this copper sheeting here on here like this because then when these strings drop in here and make contact with the copper I can ground my strings through this way so I'm going to find out where those holes are I'll push them all through like so and so I'll have four holes here uh, there we go there we go there we go and I'll put a wrist pin again one more time these to the back if you don't put those to the back you're gonna have a problem so then I'm gonna tap those in like so and next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lid and I'm gonna cut it with these shears and uh, I'm gonna go to the edge there like this and I'm gonna cut it nice and straight and then I'm gonna lay this on here like so figure out where I'm at mark that and then cut that and of course I'm going to take this opportunity to knock down any rough edges that are on there 
so uh, somebody doesn't hang it up or get it cut or uh, cut themselves up. so I'll do that and then also what I want to do is I want to trim off the very corners so they're not a sharp corner that's going to hang on something so I'm going to get that there and just trim off the very corner so you can see that I've trimmed those corners off like so then I'm going to lay this on here and I'm going to drill four holes to keep this in place and then we'll find out where uh, these line up underneath by drilling uh, from the bottom up through here and then we'll take our awl and punch that in nice and smooth okay you can see here I've drilled from the bottom up through here like so and have these four little holes a very small bit same bit that I used to drill the holes the pilot holes for these little screws now I'm going to take my awl and put it there and just drive it down like so now by doing it this way when I run the string up through here again the keeper will be there and by doing it this way what I've done is I've taken all the rough edges off this and the uh, putting it all in this way causes the metal from this canning lid to go actually go down and be in contact with the the tension pin so that's going to give me a good ground and again I've got copper tape going all the way inside the box and on the side here so uh, I can run my grounds off my jacks and my potentiometers which are volume controls uh, to here and I'll get a good ground all right so uh, there is the top of the tailpiece ready for strings to be run up through it got some bridge work to do and uh, of course we've got to match with the neck and get the graphic on top of the box but we're coming right along Now, a couple things before we uh, do some soldering. Uh, on these volume potentiometers, there's these three uh, connection points. One of them's for ground, one of them goes to your pickup or piezo, and, and the other one goes to your jack. So, uh, before I start, I'm going to want to take uh, some sandpaper, just rough this up a little bit, get rid of the oil and uh, the shiny surface, and you'll find that solder will stick to it well. So, it's just simple sandpaper and do that. A little trick I've learned is when you take your wire strippers, strip off the end, and you're going to hook this to the a potentiometer this is your ground wire you see I put that little band in there I'm gonna put this through like this and then I can just bend it like that and crimp it and hold it in place and that way when I solder it's ready to go and it's not moving around like that see something else I do is I take a little piece of heat shrink like this and put it on the wire and then when I solder this like this at the end I'll slip that over it put a match to it for a minute and that way uh, you'll never have these touching each other because this little bit of shrink is right there I have had good luck with that now I've taken a very small solder here small gauge solder and touched uh, it to a soldering iron and then touched that to there and then again we're just going to put uh, this shrink over the top of that like that and I'll put a match to it and you see it just shrinks right up there and there's no way that this will ever touch these other ones and I'll do the same to those once I'm done okay this green wire here is a ground wire it goes from that end uh, connection point there I'm going to take a little bit of solder and I'm going to tin this they call this tinning you're going to have some stuff grounding to here and then that that's going to sit there like that so I'm going to take some of this thin gauge here and put a ball of solder on here and then I'm just going to push this down and I'm going to let that solder run right there hold it let it cool and then there you go and then this third one is just a little jumper that's going to go right to the piezo so it doesn't have to be very long again we just put a spot on there and fill that hole and we'll slide 
this down here and heat it and that'll be it. We got a couple ground wires to put on the top of the sound control potentiometer and uh, we're good to go. Okay, another little trick here. I'm using a, a hot glue gun to put this piezo on. So I just put the piezo down, uh, tack it in place along the edges. Once that's stable, then I take and cover the whole thing, including the connections here. We don't want these coming loose when you're opening and closing the box. This stabilizes this, and this will stay here. And plus, if if you don't like the way it sounds, you need to move it around. So you want to put it right under the bridge, or you want to put it on the other side, or wherever it's going to give you the best sound. You can just cut the glue away and and uh, start over. So again, this is a piezo. It will go to uh, this volume control here. And then, of course, the single coil here goes to this volume control. And that's the wiring. It isn't pretty, but we'll see how it works in a couple minutes. The last thing I want to talk to you about is the bridge and um, uh, the nut up here and, and how... Uh, the string height really matters on whether your uh, instrument is useful or not. The first advice I have for you is if you're going to build one of these, this part right here, the fingerboard, it's better than it's high, that it's high on the box than low on the box. You can fix a uh, high, but if these are at the same level, you're always going to end up with strings that are too high and very few players really want to play slide all the time they want to do uh, use their fingers on the fret and that so um, you really got to watch that a little bit about this bridge here you'll remember i cut this hole in the box there's another piece of wood under here uh, that's fairly thin and then this sits on uh, that piece of wood which sits on the next section that runs all the way through the box now this is a hard wood and I had to do a lot of work to this, uh, grinding this down, sanding, cutting these holes in here. But I've got this at a spot where I've got a little bit of room where I could take this down if I need to, or I could bring it up uh, literally that much there. So this is an ideal situation. Now why do I use these? You start off using bolts, well threaded bolts as a, as a bridge. Uh, things move around. The guitar is always coming out of tune. Uh, somebody that I respect very much uh, told me you got to get away from the bolts, especially on the bridge. Now, you'll notice that the knot, I use a bolt. I like the way this looks. Plus, it gives me a way to allow these to uh, space differently. Now, what I'll do is, before I ship this off, I'm going to take a fine file and where the spacing is right for these strings, I'm going to cut just a real light notch in there uh, so these strings don't move around on these threads. But I like this look uh, and it works good for me. If you've ever bought one of those old K or Airline or Harmony arch tops, uh, from the 50s uh, and early 60s you know that the neck breaks loose right here and then at the 12th fret uh, the strings get too high because the neck is bowing in this way and so uh, what you really want to shoot for uh, is at the 12th fret here the first thing that needs to happen is if you if you play a G on open up here so you're not putting your fingers on anything and you're sounding a G then on the 12th fret, you also want to sound a G. So if you're a half note off or a note off, that's no good. Um, and, and again, the precision players won't like that. So a good rule of thumb, you take a quarter, and if you can slide more than a quarter uh, under the, between the string and the fret uh, at the 12th fret, the chances are you got a problem. So again, I've got plenty of room here to be able to adjust this by uh, turning these thumb screws. If you follow those directions, you should end up with something that kind of looks like this and maybe even sounds like this. Now, before I play a little bit, you have to remember, I don't play guitar. I don't understand music. I started making these things for uh, my daughter, Tammy, and um, it kind of went on from there. Okay, this is four strings, uh, heaviest one on top, lightest one on the bottom. 
it is tuned G C G C, which is a slight variation of G D G D, which is one of the tunings that some cigar box guitar players use because they say they can play just about anything with that tuning. But one more time, G starting off at the low string, G C G C. Now this guitar has a uh, two pickups on it, one for a piezo, one for the single coil here, and volume controls for each. You could play this thing as an acoustic by putting a microphone here, but it's not too loud. Okay, now I'm going to start kicking on uh, volume switches for each of the pickups and show you what that will do, but in order to do this correctly, we got to start doing things with the percussion section of the Wisconsin beatbox. The first thing we're going to do is turn up the piezo a little bit. Well, the piezo picks up this, picks up this. It's the same kind of thing I got in the percussion section. Now the single coil uh, doesn't pick that kind of stuff up, it just picks up the strings. A little bit cleaner than the piezo. So by varying the volume controls you can figure out what you want it to sound uh, more with a single coil, more trashy, whatever you want. So you can, this instrument's pretty versatile. Thank you. 